Hi everyone, my name is Omar and here we are in the second video of this tutorial series. Previously, we were able to create our first Django application and we validated that our app was up and running. Now we will proceed to create our administration side, create a super user, build some views in order to keep building a blog. Okay, I'm already excited, so let's get started. Okay, so we'll pick up where we left in the previous video and we finished validating that our Django application was up and running. So now we will start by creating models to the administration side. So inside your application, open the models.py file and we will define the data models for our blog. A model is a Python class that subclasses django.db.models.model in which each attribute represents a database field. Using this subclass functionality, we automatically have access to everything within django.dbmodels.models, and we can add additional fields and methods as desired. So we will have a post model in our database to store posts. At the top, we are importing the class models and then creating a subclass of models.model. Like any typical block, each blog post will have a title, slog, author name, and the timestamp or date when the article was published or last updated. Notice how we declare a tuple for status of a post to keep draft and publish posts separated when we render them out with templates. Now we tell Django to sort results in the created underscore on field in descending order by default when we query the database. We then specify descending order using the negative prefix. By doing so, post published recently will appear first. The double underscore str underscore underscore parentheses method is the default human readable representation of the object. Django will use it in many places, such as the administration side. Now that our new database model is created, we need to create a new migration record for it and migrate the change into our database. For this, you will run the command python manage.py make migrations altogether and then run python manage.py migrate. Okay, so now that we are done with the database, we'll create our administration side. We'll create an admin panel to create a manage post. Fortunately, Django comes with an inbuilt admin interface for such tasks. In order to use the Django admin first, we need to create a super user by running the command python manage.py create super user. You will be prompted to enter email, password, and username, and notice that for security, the password will not be visible. After you enter the details, run the command python manage.py run server to run our development server again and go to your site and at the end on the browser you will add slash admin and you should be able to see a login page just enter the details you provided for the super user when you were creating it after logging in you should see a basic admin panel with groups and users models which come from the Django authentication framework located in django.contrib.auth. Still, we can't create posts from the panel just yet. We need to add the post model to our admin, which 
we'll take care of that in just a second now let's go ahead and register the model so for this you're gonna open the admin.py file inside your application folder and register the post model with the following code save the file and refresh the page you should see the pulse models there now let's create our first blog post so let's click on the add icon beside posts which will take you to another page where you can create a post and let's fill the respective forms and create your first ever post all right once you are done with the post save it now and you will be redirected to the post list page with a success message at the top. Even though it does the work, we can customize the way the data is displayed in the administration panel according to our convenience. So let's go ahead and open the admin.py file again, and we will add the following code to make our admin dashboard more efficient. Now, if you visit the post list, you will see more details about the post. The list underscore display attribute does what its name suggests, display the properties mentioned in the tuple in the post list for each post. And if you notice at the right, there is a filter, which is filtering the post depending on their status. This is done by the list underscore filter method. And now we have a search bar at the top of the list, which will search the database from the search underscore fields attributes. Now that our database model is complete, we need to create the necessary use URLs and templates so we can display the information on our web application. A Django view is just a Python function that receives a web request and returns a web response. So we are going to use a class-based views and then map URLs for each view and create an HTML template for the data returned from the views. Inside the application folder, open views.py file and let's add the following code. The built-in list views render a list with the objects of the specified model, and we just need to mention the template. Similarly, detail view provides a detail view for a given object of the model at the provided template. Note that the post list view, we have applied a filter so that only the posts with status published be shown at the front end of our block. Also in the same query, we have arranged all the posts by their creation date and the minus sign before the created underscore on means that the latest post would be at the top and so on. Now we will be adding URL patterns for views. So we need to map the URLs for the views we made above. When a user makes a request for a page on your web app, the Django controller takes over to look for the corresponding view via the urls.py file and then return the HTML response or a 404 not found error, if not found. So let's go ahead and create a urls.py file in your blog application directory and let's add the following code. Now we need to include these block URLs to the actual project. So, so let's open the URLs.py under your project folder. 
Now first import the include function and then add the path to the new urls.py file in the URL patterns list. Now all the requests will directly be handled by the blog application. All right, we are done with the models and views. Now we need to make templates to render the results to our users. To use Django templates, we need to configure the template setting first. So let's go ahead and create a directory called templates in the base directory. Now open the projects settings.py file and just below the base underscore dir, add the route to the template directory as follows. Now in settings.py, scroll to the templates section and then add the newly created template underscore dirs in the dirs like this. Now save and close the file. We are done with the configurations. Now we'll go ahead and create a post underscore detail dot html, a base dot html and index dot html inside the templates folder. Now to create the base dot html file and the index dot html files, I'll be using the code example provided by the Django central documentation page. So, uh, but the main idea is that the index.html file will inherit the configurations from the base.html file. And last but not least, um, before I forget, just go to the views.py and make sure that uh, you import instead of from Django.shortcuts, just make sure that you are importing from Django.views because if not, you will get an error when you try to display the page. Now, after you save everything, it's time to refresh our page and see what we got. If you don't see this page, make sure you have the server running or try to run the python manage.py run server command again. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on creating the administration site for our blog and it looks nice. Next, we will put this application in a container and push it into an Azure registry. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next clip.